product, I think. Well, breaking news, Sean Parker just launched a Twitter account and just friended me on Twitter or followed me on Twitter, so that's breaking news. Sean is uh, following the old guy like me. Um, he was in high school when, he, uh, when I was in the business. Uh, he's, he's making some moves. Uh, Spotify is big project, made it to the U.S., launched with big fanfare. Um, you know, so you're seeing the consumer business that, obviously, and you know, I mentioned Sean Parker really just as uh, you know, tongue in cheek, but he's really uh, the new generation. He's been through the block with the VCs, got burned. It's well documented in the Facebook movie, The Social Network, where you know, he went out and wanted to create a whole new concept around Facebook, did that. Now he launched Spotify, which is basically a Napster redo in a new way, Dave. But this is about the consumer. And the, the big trend around consumerization, the iPhone, Android, cloud. I mean, you go to Hacker News, some great content on there. Look at Justin.tv, was founded at Y Combinator. You've got guys who can come into the business, hack the culture, um, as uh, Justin Kahn just posted on the internet this week. And hack the culture. These guys can get into business and start making things happen. So Ray, you know, we got you know Ray Wang with Constellation. We got Wikibon. We got SiliconANGLE. We are developing businesses from scratch. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. That is the new consumer trend, and that's taking the enterprise by storm. You know, we, we talk about Oracle. Oracle's been servicing these big corporations, these big enterprises, and these guys have never been, these enterprises, big consumer driven. You get a company PC, it's on your desk, you go home at night, maybe have a cell phone, and all of a sudden, bang, you got mobile, you got cloud, you got services, you got tablets. The consumerization trend is rocking the enterprise world, and it's really causing massive disruption. I want to get your take on this yeah, consumerization uh, of uh, IT. Just, just listen, listening to you, to you talk, it, it reminds me of, I go back to the Ellison Churchill Club you know, rant. Everybody remembers that. And uh, you know, a lot of what he said is, uh, Chris, much of, if not most of what he said is technically correct. The, the cloud is about databases and microprocessors and storage and you know, data centers, et cetera, all you know, off-site, okay, fine. but. To your point, the cloud is about the experience, you know, and, and the, the consumer doesn't care about the, the, the databases and the disk drives and the technology that behind, that's behind it. They care about the experience, they care, and that's the phenomenon of cloud that I think that is hard to put your hand on, but you, you, know, you know it when you see it. You were one of the first analysts out there, and obviously you run your own firm, Wikibon uh, Research Firm. You've been an IDC analyst, so you've covered this enterprise space. Last year, I think you were one of the first analysts to kind of bring up this idea of breaking down the silos. Right? I mean, isn't that what this is all about, breaking down the silos, not creating lock-in? I mean, so what is, I mean, can we ever get to an environment where a big corporation has a truly seamless consumer-like environment? Well, I think that the, you know, the, the silos emerged for, for good reason. There was a brute force way to, to, to build hardened infrastructure for a purpose-built application and, and for, throughout the stack, and you know, it worked. And when we were spending 7% of revenues on IT, companies could afford that. And you know, the, the productivity gains from IT were just enormous, but you know, as IT has become so much more ubiquitous, you got you know, guys like Nick Carr, you know, the awakening of does IT matter, you know, things have to change. And, and technology has progressed to a point where we can now actually you know, do a lot more with less. That's the big watchword. And, and so you've seen that. And the key to that is horizontal infrastructure that supports applications across the portfolio. And that's the big change that you're seeing now in the infrastructure business. I just pulled up a tweet that I pulled up on my dashboard here. We run this proprietary uh, big data backend. SiliconANGLE has a Hadoop backend. Um, I let Byron who's A-Y-E-L-E-T-B, just wrote the five big IT trends for the next half decade, mobile, social, cloud, consumerization, and big data. So literally, this is what's being talked about. And obviously ZDNet took, is running with the story. I mean, it's not new to SiliconANGLE.com. We've been saying this for years, where computer science meets social science, which has been our tagline from the beginning, hence copied by Apple and now Facebook. Um, so you know, we're in good company. We see the trends a little early with our dashboards and our research, but this is interesting. The, the biggest trends for the next decade are mobile, social, cloud, consumerization, and big data. So what's your take on those areas? Obviously cloud, mobile, social we've been covering at SiliconANGLE. Cloud we've got covered like a blanket. Social we, we live and breathe with our own tools. We know that up and down. Mobile, we all know we're going to start digging into that. But consumerization and big data we've been living in. What's well, your take on, on the, that? You said two EMCs ago, two EMC worlds ago, May of 2010, you said, you said data is, is the linchpin of cloud, mobile, and social. 
And you know, add to that the consumerization of IT, the fact that now innovation is happening in the consumer side. Our, the IT at our homes and our small businesses is better, better defined as faster, simpler, as reliable, if not more, and more secure than the IT in the big companies that we used to work at. And so I think that's right on. I mean, I think your, 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 your point was prescient back at EMC World, and I think that these indiv this individual who wrote this is, you know, there's no question that these are the, the areas. Now, so what we're seeing is, you know, next, next generation beyond the PC era, that's clearly what's happening there. And, you know, cloud is the, 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 the center of all that. So I think your, your observations two years ago, John, were right on. And, um, you know, I think the market is you know, catching up to that and finally realizing that's what this is, uh, is, is driving business today and innovation. So what do you think about um, Oracle's big data strategy? Our next guest is going to be uh, a CUBE alumni, again, Bill Schmarzo, dynamic, well-spoken individual, good friend of mine. His son plays pro baseball, uh, went to Palo Alto High School, see him at the football games, great guy. But he does a lot of big data um, systems engineering and consulting practice for EMC where he goes out and talks to customers. So Bill Schmarzo will be up next in about 10 minutes uh, talking about big data. But uh, what, what do you think about Oracle's big data announcement here? I mean, yeah. you know, again, Larry Ellison, last night in his keynote, didn't even use the word big data. He said unstructured data, multi-dimensional data, but today they actually talked about big data. So what's your angle on what you heard today? Well, I think Oracle, as I've said, has done a brilliant job packaging um, the key technologies that others are talking about and others are marketing. And what's happening, John, I think, is customers are finally asking them, well, what's the big state, what's your big data strategy? We saw last year, well, what's your cloud strategy? What's your cloud strategy? We saw cloud in the box. Now they've been, for the past you know, six, nine months, what's your big data strategy? Well, they announce a, a Hadoop appliance. They announce Exolytics. Uh, and so, is that Hadoop appliance conflicting with EMC's Hadoop appliance? You think? Yeah, I mean, I, you saw Tucci or Gelsinger put up a slide today, and it showed Greenplum and Hadoop and Oracle all sort of fitting in nicely together. I think Oracle's messaging is going to be completely different than that. Oracle, you know, Ellison says flat out, we want to sell our own IP. Period. You know, we're not in the business of selling other people's IP. That's why he's jettisoning essentially Sun's commodity, you know, x86 business. So. Um, you know, very clearly, I think it, it conflicts. I think some, they are. Some frenemies. people were saying last night that Sun finally took over Oracle, given the emphasis of hardware, speeds and feeds. What's your take on that? I don't think so at all. I think that's uh, that's absurd. Uh, let me let me let me tell you one little 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 you know story, a little inside baseball on, on Oracle. One of the first things that Safra Katz did when she when they, when when Oracle acquired Sun is they looked at Sun's uh, 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 build to order or, 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 or build to inventory process. Sun would do that, they would build systems so they can stick them in inventory so that when the customer ordered they could ship them fast. And Oracle said, no, that's not happening, you're going to be like Dell, we're going to build to order. So what that did is it, you know, it drove obviously, you know, Oracle's so financially focused on free cash flow and, 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 and inventory turns and so that little example, and there are many, many others, uh, is really how Oracle has brought the type of discipline that, that Sun always needed. Um, and I think, you know, this, not chasing revenue, chasing profits. I mean, I think that there's no way that, that, that anybody but Oracle is in charge. What do you think about the folks out there who are not on the enterprise business? What's your take on what's happening in the enterprise? If you had to summarize to the thousand people watching right now, what's happening? So I think that the big thing about the enterprise business is the, the business has turned into an oligopoly with with, with four or five or six companies really controlling the chessboard. It's, it's IBM, it's Oracle, it's HP, it's Intel, it's Microsoft, and I think the, the emerging horse on the, on the track is VMware. And uh, EMC just happens to own VMware, we're probably the greatest acquisition in the history of the computer industry. And so what's happening is any move that these companies make sends ripple effects throughout the industry, and it's, it's really a situation where you have a big companies with a lot of cash, um, we're starting to see some solidification in the base. Now, I get concerned about an HP move like autonomy. So HP, large company, largest company in the industry has gone out and bought autonomy. It's, 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 it's using a lot of cash to do what that. What do you hear about developers? I mean, one of the developer angles I see out there is that developers want choice and they want a platform. So, you know, Ray Wang talked about consolidation. We've been talking about consumerization. Okay, I buy the consolidation, but if you're a developer, you really don't want a market power company like Oracle dictating terms. Obviously, um, Java One's going on right now in San Francisco as well. I mean, the city's shut down with Oracle 
Oracle and, and tech guys right now, it is all tech people all the time. It's not just about Oracle's big fat database, it's about Java 1, MySQL. You get some really serious programmers in town yeah. this week um, really trying to you know, synthesize what the future is going to look like for them, and th they got to be concerned. So what's your take on the, uh, if, the developer if environment? If I'm a developer, I'm, I'm, I'm betting on Cloud Foundry. I think that their approach is right. You know, you pick the development platform that you want to choose. And, and, and we'll make it available as a platform, as a service. I mean, I think that you know, VMware has it right. I mean, I think they're, t they're taking because a Cloud Foundry is early, it's kind of vapor, but I mean, come on, is that real? No, I think it is. I mean, I think that they're committed to it. They're going to invest in it. They're going to attract, they've got a great ecosystem. I mean, if you're a developer, why wouldn't you bet, uh, if you want to be in the enterprise, why wouldn't you bet on the VMware ecosystem? I mean, uh, uh, well, I mean, VMware doesn't have the muscle that Oracle has, for example. But, you know, my point is Cloud Foundry is one of the most talked about topics, as you know, in our communities. Yeah. It's, it's new, it's emerging, and it's growing. That being said, Oracle is the, you know, 800-pound gorilla in the market. Yeah, so, I mean, do you want to develop for Spring or Ruby or, you know, do you want to develop, you know, Java apps for Oracle? I mean, I guess a lot of it depends on, you know, where you're coming from. You got to start with a green, with a, with, a, with a, 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 a white sheet of paper. Where would you start? Well, the thing about startups is that they, they don't want the technology tax. So Mark Andreessen said this uh, last week that Oracle's a ticking time bomb or a clock is ticking. I just put the second, that part in. He said their time has come or coming. What time frame that is, he wasn't specific, but his point was startups do not buy Oracle hardware. I mean software and hardware. They use open source software, commodity servers, and don't pay what they used to call the technology tax. If you yeah. got venture funding years ago as a $5 million Series A round, and you wrote a big fat check to Sun and Oracle. And if you had any money left so, over, you might do some marketing. Yeah, well, <laughs> might do some like development. Um, so there was a graveyard of startups that just never made it past that initial hurdle, which was just the gear. Um, I mean, even back then, to provision a router, you still had to pay, you know, to put a little data closet together, you know, 10 grand. So, okay, that's now gone. That's real innovation. That has spawned a massive uh, ecosystem of developers. Those developers are using Spring. They are using Puppet. They are using Chef. As we talked about at VMworld, those develop that developer community is really growing. And then you've got Java 1 and MySQL over here kind of sitting there. So the question is, that I have is, what's going to happen with that? How does Oracle take that? So I want to drill down on that this week and try to unpack that concept of Java 1, MySQL, standards, open source, and how does that fit into the Oracle equation? And how does Larry handle that? Does he buy? Does he bring it in house and develop his own IP? Per personally, I think it's stable, That's, but it's not where all the innovation is going to be. I mean, that's my take on it. By the way, I want to go back to, I know Andreessen is part of the, the, the inside circle, the inner circle of, of, of your Silicon, Silicon Valley crowd. I know you have a lot of respect for him, but he, he made that statement, um, but he also wrote that blog post you know, endorsing the autonomy deal. Now he's biased, he sits on the HP board. I want to know how many of those startups in his portfolio use autonomy software. That's what I would like to know. Do you have any sense of that? Don't know. I can Don't promise know. you it's zero. <laughs> We're getting some comments here on the feed on justin.tv and one of the comments is uh, from Epic Fury. Does anyone know why the stock market is dipping? Um, well, we just had a financial analyst on board, Ray Wang. I'm not sure he's actually a stock picker or day trader or a financial analyst at that level. He's more of an industry analyst. I'll tell you my opinion, and I'm not a stock analyst, this is my opinion. I think the tech market is stuck because outside of the, the emerging tech business of Silicon Valley startups, a huge old marketplace exists where companies have not transformed and they are not producing any profits. And you, you overlay that with a global credit crisis from the US going back to the you know, 2008 depression, we are an absolute company, our country that's bankrupt. And so Wall Street is hemorrhaging. I, I personally believe that the tech business in Silicon Valley is booming. I see yes, huge growth. I see companies with IT investing in a lot of projects. So my prediction is the market will rebound very quickly because companies will be investing those profits in creating, and creating more top line revenue. So I have a slightly different answer. Uh, I think the market is tanking today because it's the first trading day of October. <laughs> I mean, this is very, I'm serious, this is very predictable. The summer rally really petered out. Yeah. Um, people, yeah. are, as you pointed out, worried about you know, European debt crisis and the like, and, right. it's, and it's, it's October. And, and it's and looking like the, it looks like the Patriots will win the Super Bowl, so that's an AFC team, so yeah. the stock market tends to do worse <laughs> on AFC teams. Also, the Red Sox uh, didn't make the playoffs, so uh, that's another sure, factor. Yeah, that yeah. is a factor, but uh, another factor, the yeah, stocks but so, are dropping. I, mean, I just, I, I, I think that you know, people are going to take a breather here, and hopefully we'll have a Santa Claus rally that was better than yeah. the summer is, rally. Is here. the U.S. the next Greece? 
Yeah, that's the big that's the big question, you know. And and I think that the tech economy is booming. I think there's a bubble going on in tech. And this is the big conversation I have all the time when I go out on, on the weekends. This weekend was no different. Went to the Stanford football game against UCLA, and uh, you know at the tailgate we're having a great time talking about essentially the, this bubble. Basically, we are in a bubble, but people are making money. Unlike the last bubble, um, people weren't making any money, and it was all hype. You know, what I was seeing, what I'm seeing with Groupon, Airbnb, I mean, these companies are unsustainable. I totally disagree with some of the guys out there that are investing in those companies. I, I think Airbnb is going to be a pets.com. I think Groupon is going to be sideways. All right, but take a box.net. I, I, like, I like living social. How about, how about like a box.net, right? I okay. mean, a lot of hype around that company. Is that a real deal to you? Well, I mean, I like, I mean, hey, I love the idea of a kid who was an MIT or where in a school and basically took the FTP client and put a UI on it. I mean, that's basically what he did. And even now, Box.net is clearly doesn't have any advantages to differentiate themselves. So in the consumer side, it's really easy to use and, or get out there. I mean, I'm still hearing complaints about Box.net. People think it's not easy to use. Um, but people are using it because the barriers to use it are low. It's a good product. The product's value proposition for Box.net consumer is that it's easy to access, it's free to use, or relatively free to use, um, and then they're going to make some improvements. The enterprise side of Box.net I think is highly challenged. They have one big deal with Procter & Gamble. They're really not doing anything else uh